Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Controls. Um, got another little problem here of turning a transfer function into a state-based representation. So uh, here's our transfer function. It's going to be 30 over s to the fifth plus 8s to the fourth plus 9s to the third plus 6s squared plus s plus 30. And I'm going to put it in a block here just to, because I can. And the input is R of S, and the output is C of S. So, uh, state space representation. If you haven't been introduced to it, uh, then I, I'm not going to go into deep about it. Uh, that can be in some other video, or you can find out from your professor. Uh, this is just a quick example. Uh, if you have a state space, then what you're going to do is you're going to have, set it up in a matrix. And what you, how do you know what size that matrix, the main matrix is going to be, is by what power you have. So since I have S goes up to a power of 5, then the matrix is going to be a 5 by 5. So we have X dot uh, 1, X dot 2, X dot 3, X dot 4, X dot 5. Uh, now this is a shortcut method, so if you don't know what these X dots and stuff are or where they come from, uh, watch a different video to see the, um, the derivation of this kind of layout, basically. Uh, this is also sometimes just uh, abbreviated as x bar dot, so a vector of x dots. This is going to be equal to a 5 by 5 matrix. So we're just going to draw out here real quick. Multiply it by x bar, or x1, x2, x2, x3, x4, x5, so on and so forth. <coughs> Plus the output, which would be u. Um, and you use, uh, you use u generically as the output, but you can use like C of S or something. Well, no, don't use C of S. Just use u because it makes the notation a lot clearer for you later on. You can kind of ignore the C, S, and the R, S. But in order to put this into a state space, uh, phase variable form, basically, what you gotta do is you have to look at this and that. The numerator and your denominator. You, oh, sorry. The numerator is 30. And make sure I have the rest of that right. Yep, that's all right. You also have down here y is equal to something by a 1 by 5 vector times x bar plus u again. So, in order to put this in a variable form, what you basically do is the bottom row of this matrix is going to be the reverse order of this transfer function. Uh, multiplied by negative 1. So you take the first one, that goes here, second one goes here, and so on and so forth. So we've got negative 30, negative 1, negative 6, negative 9, negative 8, and <coughs> negative 8. Oh, negative 8. That's it. Sorry. Uh, the S5 doesn't count. <laughs> I know that's kind of a weird thing, but again, that goes in with the derivation of the uh, transfer function. You have to make sure, if you're going to use the shortcut method of just taking the reverse order and negative in the bottom row, this has to be in proper form. There cannot be a number in front of the s, to the, uh, the t highest power of s. If you do that, you have to, if there is, you have to divide it through all the way and by the numerator and everything else in order to get this by itself. So, you got negative 30, negative 1, negative 6, negative 9, negative 8, so on and so forth. So that's pretty, that's pretty quick and easy. And then, I'm just going to put the diagonal in here real quick. Just like that. You know that the, the, di the diagonal above the diagonal has to be all one. So one, two, uh, three, four. Yes, got that right. And then, this isn't looking very good. I'm sorry. 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. There we go. That looks a little bit better, a little clearer. And all the rest of these are going to be zeros. So, again, a pretty easy little thing to do. So, you just take the denominator of the transfer function, so long as it's in proper form, take the reverse order and negatives of those values, of the coefficients and put them in the lower uh, part of the matrix 
the ones on the upper diagonal, well, the ones in the diagonal above the diagonal, and then the rest of it is zeros. So that's pretty quick and easy. And then as far as the output goes, or this part goes, this uh, matrix, the B matrix, you've got zero, 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 thirty. So the reason you do that, again, this is something is zero, so you can look at this as a, uh, if it, from the reverse order again, the lowest power at the bottom going up. If there was like an S here, then there'd be a one right here. And then moving on, if you want the Y output, uh, the output actually wasn't defined in this problem of exactly what it is or what you're looking for. If you were looking for an output of X or something like that, then if you're looking for an output of, for X1, then you put one in the X1 space. You can look at this as X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, X1, X2, X3, X3, across this vector. And if you're looking for the output of X1, then it's one in that space of the, the vector. And this one, this value is almost always zero. I'm not going to go into the details of that right now. But basically, for the standard transfer function, this value is always zero. And whatever you're trying to find, you put a one in that spot, basically. And that's all there is to it. It's a pretty easy system. And you can just set those values right. In.